It's incredible seeing so many um, students here tonight at the Future Anything Activate program pitching their amazing ideas, um, the finalists from all around the country. Um, it's mind-blowing for me seeing such um, young people with such amazing ideas, with such incredible prototypes, um, and now looking to take that next stage. It was different to my other classes because I could talk to others and learn from them and grow my own ideas as well as help them grow theirs. A program like the Activate program really shifts people into that way of thinking about their own future and the control they have over their destiny as early as possible. Um, thinking about what potential futures they could live and actually getting them into that experience of you know, breaking down boundaries, uh, accessing the knowledge they need and, and creating some pretty incredible solutions as well. I did this as an English unit and it was so amazing. It's nothing like I've ever done before and it was really engaging and it felt like that what we were doing really had a purpose and could make a difference. And I can't just apply that to my business, but um, also real life, which is awesome. It teaches them how to solve problems and to build opportunities for themselves and others. Usually I'm very independent, like I'll do it myself, but I'm really glad that Mariah and I have chosen to do it together as we've learnt so many more things from each other yeah. and been able to go further than we would have ever expected if I was just by myself. It really does like show how hard work like pays off. Shaping us to have a more flexible mindset of being an entrepreneur. I'm not too great with uh, handing in assignments and deadlines isn't really my strong point, but I found you just kind of kind of push and when you do have that kind of drive for something that you really want to happen, like something that you need to happen, it kind of comes naturally. Teamwork, we've learnt teamwork. We have. I will ride this tricycle around the campus until our enterprise becomes a reality. Thank you. The, the top prize, two and a half thousand dollars cash, website, the, the mentoring and, and coaching, and the one that we selected um, as the winner um, this evening. Might do a drum roll. Hey, oh. <laughs> Was Chloe's heat pack. Welcome to our final semi-final. We had four events on Monday and this is the fourth of four events today, the culmination of our 2022 Activate program. We're so thrilled to have you here and we know that you are going to have an amazing hour watching our young entrepreneurs pitch their innovative ideas. To kick off, I want to show you something that should be fairly familiar. And whilst you look at this map, I want you to reflect on how old you were when you first saw it. For me, I would have been in prep and I remember getting a blank one that looked kind of like this and having to match the capital cities along with the states. I want to show you a second map now and I'd love for you to pause and reflect on how old you were or where you were when you first saw this map. What's super interesting is we often find that sometimes um, in rooms that we work with, there's a whole bunch of people that have never seen this map before. For those that don't know, this is a map of Aboriginal Australia and all of the, our beautiful First Nations people and the fabric of this country. What I find fascinating is although this map is about 65,000 years older than the first map, we often see it much, much later. For me, I would have been in my late 20s before I saw this for the first time. I want to start today by kind of grounding us in a philosophy that's really strong uh, for us at Future Anything. And it's this belief that true innovation comes from deeply honouring and understanding our past. It's in looking back at the wisdom of the collective and using that as a catalyst to reimagine the future, that great things are born. And so today, um, I want to start this semi-final by acknowledging the traditional owners on which we're all living, working, playing, learning and creating. 
For me, in Mianjin, in Brisbane, that's the Yagara and Turrbal people. And acknowledge any First Nations people that might be watching us today as well. So what have you got yourself into? That might be what you're wondering. <laughs> we would love to see you engage with us on our community. If you're tapping in, if you're watching from wherever you are, jump in and follow us or engage with us across Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Let us know where you're at. Maybe let us know what land you're on as you're joining us today. And please do, um, yeah, stay involved over the course of the next 55 minutes while we get stuck into our final semi-final. Now, these semi-finals are the culmination of our Activate program, which is a curriculum embedded entrepreneurship program for students all around the country. This year in this program, we've had over 5,000 young people across 50 schools in their classrooms, looking at problems that they care about and coming up with cool solutions. And so the mission that our young people that will be pitching today have embarked on is this one, to take on the role of entrepreneur and pitch an innovative idea that also makes the world a better place. Now, what's really cool about these semifinals is the winner of each of our eight semifinals goes through to our national grand final at the end of November, where they have the opportunity to pitch for the funding and support, to take their idea out of the classroom and into the real world, like our 2018 winner, Tanika. Tanika was a young person who was bullied pretty awfully while she was in high school and wanted to do something about that. So she designed a school sock, but not as we know it. She had them white above the surface of the shoe, so she couldn't get in trouble from her teachers for wearing non-uniform socks, but partnered with this cool graffiti artist who designed these epic patterns underneath the shoe. The metaphor of the socks was you don't know what's underneath the surface for young people, and a portion of the profits went to support Kids Helpline. Now, Tanika won our 2018 National Grand Final, and she walked away with two and a half grand cash, and then we worked with her to crowdfund her first run of socks that found their way into school uniform shops which is pretty cool our 2019 winners were culturehood now culturehood stumbled across a statistic as young polynesians that said that if you were in the polynesian community you were more at risk of seeing or experiencing domestic violence than many other cultures they were shocked into action when they read this so benina uh, the young person on the team who's sitting down the front is this awesome artist so they took her creative work, and they printed it down the sleeves of hoodies, sold these hoodies with a portion of the profits going to support victims of domestic violence. They pre-sold their first range of 50 hoodies before they even had them manufactured. Pretty cool. And then we skip along to 2020. Um, our national grand final this year was held virtually very much like this because of a little thing called a global pandemic. And rather than tell you what it's like to win a national grand final, I thought I might show you. It has come up with something that is so important for us now in Australia, uh, in the world, and we believe has got a great chance with the right partnerships and the right work and a lot of hard work um, to be successful, and that is Aqua Shield. Yeah! And they jumped as which is <laughs> well done, guys. Fantastic. Wish we'd been. I mean, this is why we do what we do, to kind of create opportunities for young people in education so that they can get this excited about learning. Um, so this was 2020 and uh, AquaShield actually used the technology that exists in wristbands that repel sharks from coming near surfers and took that technology and attached it to flotation devices that they dropped off the coast at intervals to create an AquaShield. Pretty good for a group of year 10 students. And then we skipped to 2021, just last year, and our national grand final winner was Chloe, who, when she was 11, was gifted a sewing machine and at the same time or a similar time also had a sports injury that her mum gave her a wheat bag to treat. Fusing those two things together, she started making her own wheat bags in these cool, funky patterns and running it from her own Instagram account. Chloe walked away with $14,000 in prizes and funding as our national grand final winner last year. Two and a half grand cash, a branding package, a mentoring package, and the support to build her own website. She's now got a bunch of stockers um, around Queensland, also has a website that she's selling from and was one of our semi-final judges just earlier today. The real question is, are we about to watch our 2022 national grand final winner in this semi-final? 
who knows it could happen now how is today going to work i'm going to talk for a little bit longer and then i'm going to introduce our three judges to the stage after that we're going to have four pitches and then our judges will go and deliberate and you will have the opportunity to vote for your favorite pitch as far as the structure of the pitches go the only real rule is that the students have three minutes and three minutes only to pitch their idea at the end of the three minutes we cut them off after that our judges have four minutes to ask any clarifying questions that they might have about the students' ideas. At the end of the four pitches, the judges leave the room and deliberate to pick a winner. And the winner of this semi-final gets a golden ticket straight through to our grand final. Now, whilst our judges are deliberating, you also have a really important job and that's to vote for your favorite because the team that amasses the most votes will be crowned the people's choice of this semi-final. And it's possible that a people's choice winner from our semi-finals may get a wild card entry straight into our grand final. So we are set for what is going to be a fast and furious final. Enough from me, let's bring our judges to the stage. It's my pleasure to welcome Tom, Sheetal and Joel. Please join us now. And look, I've just said to these legends that I hate a bio read, so I'm not going to do their long list of accomplishments the disservice by reading them all out. I mean, it would take 50 minutes for me to tell you everything about these three remarkable humans. Instead, I'm going to throw to them and get them to give you a little bit about who they are. And then, team, I'd love it if you'd maybe share what's something that you're looking for from our young people's pitches today. What do you really gravitate towards when you see people pitch cool ideas? Tom, I might throw to you. You're no stranger. You've sat in the grand final judging seat before. You've also joined us in the semifinals. Awesome to have you back again. Um, tell us a little bit about you and then what are you looking for today? Firstly, thanks so much for having me, Nick. And it's lovely to see all of you here today. Congratulations for getting through to this, this final. It's, it's so exciting to be here. Um, my name's Tom. I'm the founder and CEO at Impact Boom. So we, we, we help people take their ideas and turn them into reality. And we're really, really passionate about ideas that change the world and business that is used for good. And we run programs around Australia. We have media, a podcast at Impact Boom, and, and lots and lots of passion about these sorts of events when it comes to um, looking at, at, at our future leaders and the ideas that they have. So um, what, are we, what, are, what would I be looking for? I think ultimately when it comes to pitches like this, we are really interested in the people behind the idea, the people that have passion, that are enthusiastic, that have a really deep understanding for the problem that they are looking to, to tackle, and also clarity, some, uh, some clarity around how they're going to be tackling that problem. So that's really um, uh, uh, one, of the, one of the big things that I'm looking for today. I wish you all the absolute best of luck, and I can't wait to see you all pitch. Awesome. Thanks so much, Tom. Um, Sheetal, we'll throw to you. I'm just hoping that the dogs like jump up and make some sort of appearance at some point during this. I know you don't want that to happen, but secretly I'm hoping that they reveal themselves during our pitch. But tell us a little bit about you and um, and what you'll be looking for in today's pitch as well. Yeah, so I'm Sheetal. My pronouns are she and her. I am a lawyer and a uh, DEI facilitator. Um, I run, I think, Australia's only firm that offers a pay what you can model for legal fees. I'm very passionate about access to justice and inclusion and equity, which is why the firm set up the way that it is. Um, the diversity and inclusion consulting that I do is set up similarly. So we have people with their lived experience um, informing DEI products for larger organizations. So they're getting remunerated for the lived experience and uh, we're trying to minimize the emotional labor, uh, free emotional labor. So that probably is what I'm looking for. I'm big on passion and stories. I love a good story. So I really want to know what the story is behind the pitch, um, the story that motivates you, what made you think of what you've created, why you've created it. Um, I created my firm because it was the firm that my friends and family needed because we wouldn't qualify for legal aid and we wouldn't be able to afford top legal fees. So I created it because it's what my family needed. It's what my friends needed. Uh, similarly, in the DNI space, uh, the firm, the consultancy was created because we had people wanting to share their stories, but kept being asked on panels and being asked to provide that for free. So we commercialized it and sent it to the entities um, so that we could get that remuneration uh, for those lived experiences. So something like that in the sense of why you're doing what you're doing and the passion behind it. 
Um, so that's what I'm looking for. And, and like Tom said, pleasure to be here. And I'm really, really looking forward to seeing the uh, innovation of the next generation and wish you all the very best of luck today. Awesome. Thank you. Last and certainly not least, we're going to throw over to Joel, who we've actually had involved in our program as one of our activators. All of our Activate schools get partnered with an industry mentor to support them with five hours or so um, of support throughout the course of their delivery and it's an attempt to try and bridge the gap between education and industry, you know, learning and life and kind of make the connection between those two things. So Joel, thrilled to have you back here as well. Um, please tell us a little bit about you. You're in Idaho, we know that. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're up to and also what are you going to be looking for in today's pitch? Sure, thanks, Nicole. It's great to be here and echo all the words of the, the previous two. Uh, when I sort of think about this opportunity for you today, I think of myself as a 11 and 12 year old kid starting my own business, uh, spray painting people's house numbers on the front of gutters and on their wheelie bins. And I went and started window cleaning businesses and I've done a lot of different things. Right now I'm involved in adventure tourism, taking people on luxury trail running holidays. Uh, and so why I'm here in Idaho is I'm scouting locations and enjoying the opportunity to catch up with some great people. Uh, but as far as my work is concerned, I've, I've been a consultant. I've done lots of different things in executive roles, but I really, I love working with people who have an idea and want to turn it into something that's really cool and become a reality for them. And so when I look at what you're going to be doing today, the things I'll be checking out on is really, do you have courage actually to, to, to go the distance? Because it's going to take some courage for you to do what you're going to do. Uh, so you've, exemplified that certainly to get to this point to be on the semi-finals and no doubt it'll take a little more to go past this point so what I'm keen to see is is people boldly approaching uh, this opportunity and saying this is us notice me and the people who step up they're the ones who get noticed and if they're courageous enough to continue even when it gets hard then you know that you're a success uh, no matter whether you make a million dollars or not, it doesn't really matter. But it's if you feel inside that you've succeeded with that thing that you believed in and you've been heard, then that's the main thing. And then it just goes from there. You build experience and experience comes only when you exercise courage. So go forward and let's make this thing a fun day. Awesome. I'm still back at the place where you were talking about like running and holidays in the same sentence. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. really struggling to <laughs> reconcile those two things together. Um, so Good that thing. might take me a little while to work through um, <laughs> because I'm just thinking about holidays, walking down to the pool with a book. That, that right, That's my vision right. of a holiday, the running thing. Um, yeah, that feels like a lot of hard work. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not the only one. The background. <laughs> this is one of the pictures I took recently. <laughs> so this one's yeah, from you. Yeah, yeah. It's good. I'm great with like maybe a picnic, you know, I'm, I'm right. good with like sitting. Yeah, yeah. I might be <laughs> hold the refreshments after the trail run. Right. I feel like that's yeah. a place if, that I can really work from. Right. If that you bring donuts, I'm good. Yeah. Drive to the location, take the photo, have the picnic and drive back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, we'll be the support crew whilst you run. I think it's really the moral of this story. <laughs> All right, enough from us. It's time that we queue in our first team. So judges strap in. It's going to be a wild ride. We're heading up the range to Fairhome College to um, jump in for our first pitch for today. And uh, Waste of Warmth, Legends, how are we feeling? Good day. Excellent. We're so excited to hear you pitch. So we're ready when you are. Thank you. Thank you. Your waste is the way to warmth. Good afternoon, judges. Our names are Julia, Mackenzie, and Evie. And today we are privileged to discuss our innovative idea. Next slide. Did you know at the last census, 116,000 people were recorded homeless in Australia? Additionally, the fast fashion wastage problem leads to about 92 billion tonnes of clothing waste being discarded annually. The Waste of Warmth vision is to provide comfort for our homeless community using pre loved fashion, as we believe these devastating statistics need reducing. Next slide. After many new techniques while creating our prototype, we discovered that an old piece of clothing could be turned into yarn, and from there, a knitted garment could be made. Using this strategy, we created our first prototype. As you can see, this prototype displays a unique crochet pattern, and after implementing stakeholder feedback, we aim to make our blanket even warmer, which inspired the idea of sewing a flannel fabric to the knitted texture. Next slide. To make our blanket, 
We will initially rely on clothing donations from the Toowoomba community to produce our blankets with a view to partner with local op shops for textiles as our business develops. After the production of our waste to warmth blankets, our homeless community will have a higher hygienic standard through orange dry laundries, and every one in 10 blankets that we produce will be given to the homeless. There are also multiple growth opportunities within our waste to warmth business, which include employing the homeless people to assist with the manufacture. Next slide. Our very first orders will be taken through the Instagram and Facebook messaging pages, and through this, each unique blanket will be discussed. Using these apps, our business pitch will be advertised and we'll also raise awareness of how citizens can help create more blankets. Next slide. Furthermore, our business prides itself in giving our customers a once-in-a-lifetime experience when buying our product. Exemplification of this is through our sentimental blanket option in which customers are enabled to supply their own special textile for a bespoke blanket. We have also included a well-thought-out packaging design which consists of honeycomb-style wrapping and the product will be tied with a 100% organic ribbon to create that wow factor. Next Our slide. business also offers doorstep delivery. Next <laughs> slide. Consequently, our financial plan has been well thought out to ensure it is sustainable. Firstly, when purchasing a blanket, the customer will be charged $105 without the inclusion of shipping, leaving a surplus of $55 after overheads. Depending on donations, approximately 30 $35 is donated to Orange Scale Laundries and the remaining $20 is reinvested into future growth opportunities. Next slide. Overall, we have created a sustainable blanket which aims to make winter more comfortable for the homeless. To get our business started, we require a plentiful amount of clothing donations as well as a knitting machine which will cost about $90. Together, we can make a bigger difference in homeless people's lives. Your, Your waste is a way to warmth. Thank you. Oh, fantastic work, team, and you nailed the timing. I'm so impressed. Let's bring our judges back on screen. And I'm going to kick off with Sheetal, your question for the girls from Fair Home on ways to warmth. Curly one for them. What are you thinking? Oh, curly one. Mm. I was more interested. <laughs> what was the, uh, any personal connection to starting this company? Um, well, so we went to an excursion to Brisbane uh, last term when we were um, making our business and we saw how many people's lives were impacted by homeless and we thought that we would try and make a difference. And also after reviewing the statistics, we knew like they were so high that we wanted to improve them. Fair Fantastic. Joel, over to you presentation i just quick question though what's your scale like of operations presently at like how did, how much do you think you can produce presently so presently um we are aiming to buy an editing machine and it will start quite small but um hopefully with partnering with local op shops we'll be able to get enough clothing donations to produce at least like 200 dollars worth and then we can continue to um develop our business and even hire some more um even people that might want some casual work kids our age would be good yeah sure thank you awesome tom well done on an excellent pitch it's obviously really well rehearsed and lots of enthusiasm there so that's something i, I loved seeing about it um i'm really curious to hear what you think the biggest challenge is going to be now in actually making this a reality like what what is the one thing that could really just flip this on its head and and um and make it really hard to actually succeed uh, yeah, so one of the big main like impacts that we're going to have is clothing donations, receiving enough of them to be able to make the blankets and being able to receive enough money to ensure we can like ref um, refund enough back to the business so we can make a profit. Thank you. Awesome. Well done, team. You can rest easy, breathe a sigh of relief. Going first is kind of the best because then you can just sit back and watch everybody else pitch, which is kind of a good feeling. So one team down, I'd love to introduce our second team to the stage from Kenmore State High School. Colour me. Team, how are we feeling? Good. Excellent. I love that you've got like your setup behind you. So I'm really pumped for your pitch. Um, we're ready when you are. Take it away. 
Hi, I'm Gabby. Hi, I'm Paul. And I'm Bella. We're the founders of Colour Me. Fly. Statistics showing that 42% of Australia's homeless population is caused by domestic violence. Maggie, at 15 years old, was constantly abused by her own family. She packed a bag and fled. Nowhere to go, she became homeless. She contacted Mission Australia's helpline and now she lives independently in the slide. As reported by the Australian Institution of Health and Welfare, a considerable number of men, women and children experience homelessness due to domestic violence. This is where the national charity Mission Australia steps in. Slide. Since 1859, the national charity is motivated to providing safe homes to everyone experiencing homelessness. How are we taking action? 15% of our profits will go to helping these victims. Slide. Mission Australia believes a person's circumstances shouldn't define their future and that given the right support, everyone can reach their vision. Slide. Our product, the one of a kind, is a variety of tablecloths that will keep little humans entertained and relieve parents from stress. Our diverse design will also appeal to many different personalities. It is made from a cotton canvas fabric with a design screen printed on the top. It is cut to size and hem prior to the printing. Our product is eco-friendly, it does not contain plastic, the fabric is biodegradable, and the depleted markers can be recycled. The finished product is placed into a biodegradable packaging, where it is sent to different stores to be sold and used. Slide. Our one-of-a-kind to be purchased by cafes and restaurants, allowing customers to make a small donation for a tablecloth and washable markers. Colour Me will also be donating tablecloths to homeless shelters run by Mission Australia, allowing children a distraction from negative thoughts. It is proven that creativity increases positive emotions, improving the function of our immune systems while reducing anxiety and stress. Slide. The one of a kind will sell for $30. This will include five washable markers as well in a variety of colours. And materials will be coming from wholesalers and taking into consideration our startup costs, which will include a wide variety of items, we will need a total of $2,500 for investors. Aside from Mission Australia, 25% of our profit will go back into our business. Slide. Our prototype has received positive feedback from our trialling customers, aka friends, family and teachers. They believe that this idea is achievable and creative, and so do we. All we need is a little help. Our one of kind will be advertised to a wide variety of people, bring, from cafe owners to busy parents looking for a way to keep their little humans entertained. So we plan to market our one of kind on our social media as well as word of mouth. So we ask for your help to get our product the recognition it deserves. So now, you may be wondering, is our business scalable? The implementation of merchandise, volunteers, gaining sponsors and sponsoring, and releasing limited edition one of a kind will ensure that our business has the capacity to grow and meet increased demand. Slide. So why should you choose us? Here are three main reasons why we are different from competing businesses. We are passionate about creativity and we want to make sure that everybody can express this. Our product is sustainable and ethically produced. We are committed to helping reduce the number of people suffering from homelessness due to domestic violence. We believe all Australians must have a safe home, ensuring people and communities can thrive. Our simple product will make a big difference and so can you by investing in Colony. Slide. Thank, Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, uh, very good. I want one at my desk. <laughs> That's the yeah. first thing. Uh, judges, welcome back to the stage. And Joel, we're going to start with you. So questions for Ken Moore's Colour Me. Yeah, that's a great presentation. I really felt that. Uh, I was interested to know how you intend to do the shipping activities because that's going to be a logistical thing. If people order this thing, how do they access that? So we're going to have a website that we will like eventually start up and then we're thinking of only shipping nationally, just like around Australia, and then shipping costs will be included like in the price of our tablecloth. Right. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Tom, over to you. Yeah, well done, Colour Me. That's another excellent pitch. Um, so, yeah, just really well rehearsed and, and I've got a really good idea of, of what your business is about. Um, I get a, a bit of an understanding about ultimately who you are targeting this towards, but I, I would love to hear from you. Of all the people that would buy this, who is the, the key target audience and how is the best way that you guys believe you're going to reach them and make the sales that you need to make? Um, I definitely think that um, maybe parents with uh, children who are aged quite young, who are still not 100% sure how to have uh, adequate table manners, or maybe they get bored at the table. Um, yeah, so de definitely parents who find a difficulty in uh, keeping their kids entertained at the dinner table. And definitely cafes at like restaurants, you take your um, daughter, or your son out, and they have nothing to do. And except it's, instead of them running around the cafe, they've got something to color on. 
Yeah. And it's washable as well. So like compared to just paper where they were given pencils and like paper, they can color this in with the markers and then it get, just gets put straight back in the wash and can be used again. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you very much. Great response. Team, before I kick off the sheet or to ask a question, do you want to pull it off the board and just bring it a little bit closer to the camera so that the judges can see it a bit closer up? <laughs> yeah, cool. Oh, yeah, this is the one that's been washed. Yeah, so we so tested, we tested it out and then it's, it's been coloured in and washed. Yeah. And then these were our prototypes. This is what it would look like coloured in. So kids oh. have a wide variety of things to colour in. They're able to <laughs> access their creativity and really just let go. That's great. I feel like I might be the unruly child that doesn't have table manners and needs one of these when I go out for dinner. <laughs> Sheet all over to you, question for the team. Yeah, thank you. Um, so you mentioned that you had, um, firstly, great pitch, um, as everyone had mentioned. Um, you had mentioned that you had some people trial out the products, so friends, family, um, and then you mentioned to Tom your target audience being parents with young children in, in cafes. So were your trial people the same as your target audience? Um, so our child customers were more, you know, kids that would be entertained by this because children in our age group, you know, we have our phones, we have social media, there's, you can really do anything in the cafe, but when you're young, you know, your mind's wandering, you want something to do, you're energetic. So this is really who we wanted to trial it with. So, you know, there were a few younger kids that we did hand this out to, let them trial it, see how they liked it. We all got very positive feedback. Um, as well as getting these amazing drawings <laughs> to help with um, our design ideas. So, yeah. Awesome. Excellent work, team. Great pitch, great responses to the questions. Let's cue our third team to the stage. We're heading up to the Sunshine Coast um, to St Andrews Anglican College and we're queuing in Happy Minds. How are we feeling, team? Good. <laughs> Excellent. We're so excited to hear your pitch. So we're ready when you are. Okay. Next slide. The number of people in Australia who are impacted by a mental illness at some point in their life has increased by 13% in the last decade. This statistic now sits at 45%. Depression, anxiety and other behavioural disorders in adolescents are among the leading causes of illness in this age group. Teens and those are part of the LGBTQ plus community often struggle more with mental health, which impacts social lives and can often lead to problems such as social isolation. Next slide. Our mission is to help those who struggle with mental health and give them a way to cope. Our idea is to create Happy Minds, a business that produces gift box style packages that contain items that will help teens with their mental health. We think this idea will make a difference because we know it would help us and we know it can help others. Next slide. We believe we are the best people for this business and that we would be able to help many people because we've all had first or secondhand experience with mental health issues. This gives us the ability to understand what many people are going through and how we can help them in the best way possible. Next slide. We think this idea will make a difference. Since everyone has different preferences and different ways of coping, we would have five different boxes to choose from. The self-care box, the activity box, the distract me box, the take a breath box and the everything box. We also plan to make the boxes customizable so you would be able to choose the color and design on your box and pick some of the items that go in it. The boxes and decorations we would use would be made from recyclable and reusable materials. We would support small and local businesses by purchasing their products to use in our gift boxes. Next slide. We will also include cards with information on organizations like Beyond Blue so people can call or email if they need help. Part of our proceeds will be donated to the LGBTIQ plus health organisation who specialise in suicide prevention and mental health in LGBTQ plus youth. While there are other businesses out there that sell similar products, our idea is new and innovative because we would cater specific specifically to teens and we focus solely on preventing mental health. Next slide. Some competitors we would have include For Your Mind Boxes and Broccoli Box, which both sell mental health care packages and gift boxes. Next slide. We believe our idea is more viable than these pre-existing businesses because we would offer a wider range of options and use aesthetic designs to catch the eye of customers and draw them away from competing businesses. Our idea is also easier to reach our target market because we know people that have mental health problems and that would love to support us plus help themselves. Next slide. The cost to make these boxes ranges from $25 to $40 per box and they would be sold for $45 to $60, for, sold for $45 to $60 giving us a $20 profit per box. This is a realistic profit for the beginning of our business and gives us the ability to grow and scale. We can measure our impact by estimating a timeline of four months from the start of our business when we make our first profit. Next slide. 
We plan to have a market stall to start our business and use social media to reach more people. When our business grows, we would make a website and more. Some startup costs we would have include the market stall and website and advertising for our business. This is where you come in. We would appreciate some support and input for our business. We ask for marketing assistance to get our business up and running and to help us sell our first products. Next slide. Thank you for listening to our pitch and we hope to hear your thoughts on Happy Minds. Oh, congratulations, team. Such a slick pitch. Judges, welcome back to the stage. And Tom, we're going to start with you. Lovely. Well done, Happy Minds. Another amazing pitch today. I'm just um, absolutely over the moon with what I'm what I'm seeing and the quality of the pitches. Um, so and a, and a great initiative here. And I, I can see that all of you are really passionate about helping mental health. Um, so you've spoken about a market stall and you've spoken about some help in, in marketing as well um, to get off the ground. But I'm keen to hear what your thoughts are beyond the market stall in how you can provide value to your target market prior to them buying the gift boxes to engage them and, and ultimately that leading to sales. Uh, well, we also had the idea to start on social media, such as Instagram, which is where people our age um, are always at. Um, and this way we can market our product and get people interested before they go to buy it. Great job. Sheetal, over to you. I thought teenagers were on TikTok now. <laughs> I don't know how to work TikTok, I, so I, I'm, I'm watching videos on Instagram because I'm that old. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so what is, how will you know uh, what to put in your boxes? So I appreciate there's four different categories of boxes, but um, how do you know what's going to be on trend or on point or on flake or, or whatever the thing is that um, is going to be receptive and um, will be what teenagers want at that given time? Um, well, well, like we said, we would go to small and local businesses um, and because we are all teens, we do know what is popular and using social media, we can also um, get more data from that. Um, yeah, and just um, asking friends and stuff like that, what they're interested in um, is really helpful as well. Excellent. Joel, over to you. Yes, thank you. I enjoyed hearing that you sort of put forward a solution and that's a pretty important theme to be looking for solutions to. Uh, my question is about um, the kind of things that you would do to identify how people will be able to, I mean, will teenagers be able to afford a box like that? I mean, that's a, I, mean, I accept that there's a, an expense to prepare a box and to put it together. Um, but are they the typical demographic or is it an older demographic that would buy it on their behalf? I'm just wondering if you've done some market sounding or research to try and figure that out. Who's the actual purchaser of the box? And I know that the people who are young and who are struggling are the ones who need it, the contents, but are they the ones that actually are going to be able to buy it? That's a question I want to know. Um, well, a lot of like parents and stuff can also buy it for like their children and like their children might show their parents like this and it also might help them connect and say I need help with my mental mm. health this is a, a way for me to help get help yeah, yeah. So, and it's really right. just for um if anyone knows a friend or family member or anyone that's struggling um it's just a good way to help them rather than like trying to talk to them because they may be really closed off or not really wanting to talk about it um, so it's just a good way to show that um, they care and that they're willing I to I like help. that answer. I like that answer. Good answer. Great. Well done, team. Excellent pitch and did an amazing job of answering those questions from our judges. So congratulations. Gosh, time flies when you're having fun. We're rolling right into our last pitch for today. So we're heading from the Sunshine Coast up to the Gold Coast, our second team from Marymount College. Sticky, how are we feeling, team? Sounds very good. Yeah. Be excited. Look at the branded shirts. Now I want one. <laughs> They'll be up for sale soon. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Send me through a link. I'm already pre purchasing. Um, team, we're so thrilled to hear your pitch. Um, we're ready when you are. Two to four million surfers actively ride waves at Australia's 12,000 beach breaks. 
Every day, hundreds flock to the surf to take on the waves with a freshly waxed surfboard. We don't realise the problem behind the wax. Next. 95% of surf wax contains a harmful petrochemical called paraffin. The production of paraffin emits dioxins that are extremely toxic and cause reproductive issues, developmental damages, and even cancer to those exposed to it. This includes marine life. So why do surf wax brands add this chemical to their products? Because it's cheap. Next. Yet, yeah, surf wax doesn't need this chemical. Hi, I'm Miller. This is Ben, Summer, and Jem. Surfers passionate about the health of our oceans and co-founders of Sticky, a local sustainable surf wax brand for an economical price. Next. Handmade, composed of beeswax, coconut oil, gum resin, and clay powder. Our wax is environmentally friendly, sustainable, and great smelling. Our primary product, surf wax, is accompanied by a wide range of merchandise, where 10% of all profits will be put into the Ocean Cleanup Project. Whilst a few other organic surf wax brands exist, none have a product line behind the scenes also contributing to a common cause. At Sticky, we look at more than just wax. We look at the overall health of our oceans and the people who use them. Next. To this point, we have pre-sold 12 products from our range, stemming from our trade display event. There is now an increased demand for our wax, which we need to fill. We have created an online store where we'll be selling our products to the online shoppers market. In the near future, we aim to sell sticky products out of surf local surf shops. We have also have a business account on Instagram where we display regular updates and we'll be looking to extend to other marketing platforms. We are currently sourcing our ingredients from the local best candle suppliers, where we have calculated production of each bar to cost $1.80, selling at $5.95, giving us a 70% profit margin per item sold. We also plan to sell fair trade t-shirts and hoodies by local collar tops manufacturer and tote bags by the local bag people to market through wearable, comfortable clothing, as well as this merch line being the main source of income. Next. As an initial investment, we are asking for $10,000 to set up our business on the right track. $7,000 will go to the first line of merchandise manufacturing, which will see the greatest amount of profit, alongside $1,500 into product development, fine tuning our wax formula and production. The remaining funds will be split between branding rights for Sticky, marketing and website development. We want our website to allow a dynamic e-commerce platform, enhance our reach through our Instagram page through collaborations and endorsements, and register this company. We see the future of surf using our eco-friendly and sustainable surf wax and surf products, riding the wave towards a cleaner tomorrow. Thank you. Excellent work, team. Do you guys want to bring the wax a little bit closer to the screen so the judges can see as they join us? So this is our, um, our wax. It's a nice, nice little shape. And um, we have these, these boxes at the moment. They were cardboard, handmade, uh, recycled cardboard boxes that we'll be selling our wax in. So there's... Awesome. Very cool. All right. Last pitch, last set of questions, judges. The pressure's on. Um, and in the hot seat first, Sheetal, over to you. Well done. I wish I knew how to surf. That's one thing that I promised myself I would learn when I moved here, but did not uh, 10 years later. Um, my question is, why are we thinking about merchandise as a secondary source of income? When it, I see the purposes around sustainability, eco-friendly, less waste, so why are we looking to merchandise? So the wax is obvious, like it's, it's what we created this business off. It's one of the main problems with surfing the industry at the moment is that these waxes that we commonly use have this petrochemical. Um, but using clothing, we're using fair trade clothing. So we found local manufacturers that use um, good like uh, fair trade cotton and, and other uh, sustainable and eco-friendly materials to make these, these shirts. and and tote bags that we'll be selling. And it also will be able to spread the brand awareness. So wearing these, these around, you have companies like Sex Wax, um, FK Surf that, that have other merchandise products that people wear around. And that really is, is brand awareness, spreading it around the community. Cool, Joel, over to you. I like this one, there's a, a bunch of things in there. Question is about endorsements. Do you think that seeking endorsements from popular surfers or you know world class surfers, we have a bunch of them around Queensland and Australia generally, 
Uh, do you think that would be a useful opportunity for you to pursue? I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on, on getting endorsements for your product for, through famous people in the surfing industry. Yeah, definitely. Um, we're all involved in surf clubs ourselves, so um, like surf life-saving clubs. And uh, it's, a, it's a growing sport around here and there's, there's a lot of um, popular names coming out of it. And um, so we'll, with uh, networking, and some of us know and have connections with these people that are pretty good at this sport. Um, so yeah, get, getting them to endorse our products. Most surfers around here and most surfers around the world are pretty passionate about the health of our oceans. Um, so yeah, with, with who we know, we've got lots of connections with people around, around this, this part of the, the Gold Coast and the surf life. So yeah, getting, getting endorsements from these surfers uh, is definitely a, something we, we will look forward to in the future. Thank you. Awesome, Tom. I'm going to be really cheeky. Firstly, um, thank you so much. And um, look, I'm a passionate surfer myself, so I can um, see myself getting getting my hands on some sticky sometime soon. Um, the two questions and the cheekiness is in the two <laughs> questions is one, how many recipes and iterations of that recipe have you gone through to, to get to like a, like a really nice sticky, you know, great wax product? Second question being, Putting the merch aside, um, you know, the profit margin is not bad, but how are you going to basically get a high volume of sales? What's your strategy around high volume in order to, um, to get that profit you need to, to keep moving forward? Yeah, so um, the wax, first of all, um, we've gone through a few recipes at the moment. We, we started out with, the, with one that we found on the internet. It wasn't really that good. So we just tweaked it a bit. Um, and we've added some some different things from different sources. So we've we've got clay powder in, which I saw a bit. We've added a bit of clay powder for cold water variants because clay is a bit more um, repellent of water. So that's what you want to make the, the wax harder for cold water wax. And then we we'll use less of that or none of it for warm water wax. We're still fine tuning our formula for these waxes and um, just working at home at the moment um, manufacturing them. So yeah, we're still we're still looking for the, the exact right combination of ingredients. We have a pretty good idea of what we'll be using in, in what amounts. Um, and uh, to the, the, the mass production. Um, so we definitely can expand with the wax production. We can make it um, more materials, like we're getting more, more materials in ingredients and uh, into bigger. If we can get like a big, big, big pot or a big saucepan to melt it down, the different like numbers of those to make quite a, quite a few bars at one time. Um, but yeah, selling, selling, getting the profits out of our merchandise and wax will mostly be through these endorsements we get from from well known people as well as our website, which we look to uh, really, really get going and make it available for customers to purchase on the website and get it straight to delivered straight to their door as well as, yeah, seeing if we can start getting our products into some local surf shops and um, selling from there. Thank you. Awesome, team. Well pitched. Now, the fun moves. It goes from our pitching teams on the stage and the pressure goes straight to our judges. So we're going to wave goodbye to you and you are going to go off into your deliberation room to make the really difficult decision around who our winner and who our runner-up is. So we'll wave goodbye and we'll see you back on the other side with a verdict. In the meantime, if you are watching right now, you also have a job to do. On your screen is a cool little QR code and a link to vote for your favourite team. So jump in, uh, vote for your favourite team, and the team that amasses the most votes might walk away with the People's Choice Award. So we're going to pop some tunes on. We're going to give you five minutes or so. Our judges are going to deliberate. You're going to vote and we'll see you back really soon. Welcome back, judges. I know that was fast and furious. I'm sure there was some rigorous and robust debate. Might have been a little bit of like camera moving and some fierce words said. If anybody needs to apologise for what was said in the heat of the moment, it's okay. This is a safe place. Um, so who is going to be revealing our runner-up and our winner? <laughs> Who are you pointing towards, Joel? Yeah, I know. You're uh, off, so that's off screen I for think, me. So it's like a mystery human. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and um, I, have, I have been nominated, um, forcefully Excellent. nominated. 
Um, and look, you're right. It's it's been a very very difficult um, decision here because we we were just all blown away by by all of the the pitches today. We think you've all done a, like just a fantastic job, um, and there's just so much potential that, to be honest, I don't want to be saying Nick um, only two of these <laughs> people. I, I want to give four awards today. Oh, uh, I yes, I know, and no, you can't because. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what you mean. The standard has been outstanding. So it really, it really has. Yeah, it absolutely. Cool. So the runner up is Waste to Warmth. Well done, Waste to Warmth. <laughs> You've done an amazing Thank job. You. Thank you. Yeah, we, we think there's there's a lot of consideration around the broader business model here and the potential uh, really to, to to make a lot of impact with what you're doing. We love the fact that you're that you're really looking at waste streams and, and upcycling and ensuring that we're not just you know generating extra extra materials and putting them into the environment. So strong consideration of that consideration around employability and training of, of disadvantaged mm. people and as part of the production as well. Um, and of course, you know, some some nice sort of partnerships there as well. So it feels like a well integrated sort of model. And, um, and we think it's, it's quite, you know, not wouldn't wouldn't be the, wouldn't be easy to deliver on it's certainly a hard task ahead. Um, but you all look very, very passionate, and enthusiastic as well. So um, well done, you are the run. Well and the winner of future anything's final today is Colour Me. Well done, oh. Colour Me. <laughs> we, um, and look, this is a really hard, I'm going to say it again. Um, I, I really would like, um, you know, the other two teams it's just to here and, and to really um, not be dissuaded by this, to keep pushing on with your ideas because we are really, really impressed with your ideas too. Um, Colour Me, we, we believe there's really strong um, potential here, like the others, but I think there's um, there's a, le a level of innovation in the way that you can really take this to market. Um, there's lots of ideas um, and potential around sort of the customization or branding of different restaurants, different outlets, the ways that they are able to basically add um, an experience for the parents or carers or others that are going into these mm -hmm. um, restaurants. And I think it doesn't necessarily just have to be marketed at, at children as well. We all know that over COVID, the, the, the colouring in books and, and all those other things can add a, a whole other level of sort of entertainment when, when people are dining out. Um, it's great to, to have seen some, some product testing as well already. Good to see that you are onto this. We think, you know, there's, there is some, still some questions there as well. You know, can the, can the colours bleed through onto the table below? And, um, and are, there, are there still some more issues um, for you to be ironing out too? Um, but- Pun intended. Yeah. We think I'm your <laughs> and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. <laughs> uh, congratulations, team. Some outstanding pictures. And I, in the meantime, slid over my desk has been the results of the voting uh, whilst our judges were deliberating. And there have been over 150 votes in this round so lots of people chipping in to pick their favorite and the winner of the people's vote in our final semi-final for this year is sticky yeah. Thank you. well done team good to see your community backing you um, with what we know is going to be a cracking concept I have two surfboards that sit in my garage. Every year I tell myself I'm going to get back up on them. Every year they still gather dust. But this could be the motivation I need to actually put some wax back on the board. So congratulations to you guys as well. Now, it's got to be said that any of these concepts have the potential to make it outside of this space. And the only difference between an idea and a business is the action that you take tomorrow. So if you love your idea, if you want to do something with it, don't wait for a competition or permission, um, just make it happen. And there's a whole host of people out there that are willing to back you. So we're here to support you. And I know that there's a bunch of other people out there that are very keen to support you as well. So congratulations to all of our pitching teams for their incredible work in our final semi-final. And lastly, well, second lastly, to our judges. I think part of the reason um, 
I think, you know, it's great that you've given up your time because then time is the one thing that we only have a finite amount of. So for you to give your time to this, I think is really, really important. But secondly to that, the fact that you've given your time, I think, honours how much you're backing young people with cool ideas that you've shown up today, I think shows our young people that the ideas that they have um, are something that you can see some potential in. So I just want to say such a massive thank you um, to you all for being here today for our semifinals. Well done. Excellent. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much, Nick. Well done to you and, and the team. There's some really great, great outcomes here. Oh, better than Christmas. In fact, I can tell you which date this year is officially better than Christmas. It is the 21st of November. So if you thought this was about December, it is not, my friends. The day that you are looking for for the back end of this year is the 21st of November. And if you want to see Colour Me pitch at our national grand final, then you should snap that QR code and nab yourself a ticket for the grand final because this will be a sellout. Uh, so you definitely don't want to miss this. If you're not located in Brisbane um, and you still want to join us for the night, please jump on there and register a live stream ticket because we will be beaming the grand final out to wherever you are. Thank you so much to everybody that's joined us across our eight semifinals. I think we've amassed over 2,000 votes across the course of the eight semifinals, which just makes for such a giant audience across all of these events. So on behalf of the entire Future Anything team, we just want to thank you for your support and for backing our young people who are bending the future one youth-led idea at a time.